Hey guys, I'm Brendo, welcome to the channel. Thought I'd better introduce myself, get out of my comfort zone a little, and get in front of the camera for once. It's a strange thing to adjust to, but practice makes perfect, right? I've put segments in the description below, so if you want to skip through the intro and get to the racing, you're more than welcome to do so. So up until now, I've been covering mainly the radial tyre drag racing scene here in Western Australia, and I've had an absolute ball doing it. I've met so many great people and made a bunch of new mates. And I've been lucky enough to help crew in some of the cars and also learn what goes on behind the scenes. Building on the success of last season and the launch of the channel is something I hope to be able to continue to do for many years to come. So today's video is something a little different. We had the opportunity to get one of our own cars out on the track and it's something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And as an added bonus, I convinced the fiance to come down and see what all the fuss was about also. So we've had the GDS for a fair while now. Uh, funny enough, one of my good mates in the radio scene, Jared Dadell, was one of the guys who got the car organised and actually hand delivered it to me, sight unseen at work, when he used to work for HSV. I had my eye on it for a while and it was the first car to 100% committed to buying without even seeing it, other than in the photos. So the first time I actually saw the car was the day Jared drove it out to me so I could take delivery of it. I remember Jared mentioning that day that the GDS was pretty wild and to take it easy, but I think his perspective may have changed on the definition of wild, given his latest successes he's had in his Turbo LSA VL, cruising easily into the sevens out at the Perth Motorplex. So I've had the GDS down the quarter on a Wednesday night in the past, um, but let's just call it a no time event. I definitely need some more practice launching the car if I was to take it back there. The GDS has also made appearances on the track out at Power Cruise, but you don't realise how fast some of the other cars around really are until you're up against them down the straight in what I thought was a pretty stout street car. I remember another one of my good mates who's also now in the radio scene, Tony Mazzatelli, who was out there with Jeff Johnson and the street built crew in his Turbo LS Malu. So we were side by side coming out the back corner and I remember Tony pulling away from me down the main straight with clouds of smoke peeling off the entire back of the car. I had it to the floor and Tony was well off into the distance. The GDS for a streetcar is really no slouch and it does get out of its own way. For as heavy as it is, it still has no trouble blazing the tyres. The engine has had the active automotive 5 at 5 pack, which includes a custom ground cam, valve springs, injectors, upper and lower pulleys, full 3 inch stainless exhaust and of course a tune. Puts out in excess of 610 genuine horsepower out the wheels. So when the opportunity came up to get the GDS out in another circuit, I pretty much jumped on it. I spent a heap of time on the trailer you just watched, probably more than most of the videos I've done, and honestly, I did it for myself. Speaking with my mate Jeff from the Talk Hub channel, he pretty much nailed it in one, in that I'm my own worst critic, and I do it more for myself than anyone else. I want to push myself each video, and hopefully be surprised in what I can achieve looking back on them later on. So I was a bit undecided on how I wanted to put the race video or see shortly together. And again, I made this more for myself than anything. To be able to go over the footage and see where I can improve for the next track outing is a bit of a luxury. I spent tenfold the amount of time behind the computer editing than I actually spent at the track. And the same normally goes for most of the footage I film, just like the radial championship rounds. So I'm very much of a perfectionist and can always find things I want to change or improve no matter how many times I watch the end product. So we were out there on the track for four sessions of racing and by the second session I was already knackered. By the fourth I was completely done. The rest of the boys stayed out and worked on honing their skills, but I've got over an hour and a half's worth of footage just from the four sessions I managed to do. I ended up deciding to cut the final video down to just the last couple of sessions, and I started to try and give a bit of a running commentary. So I used this road lapel bike I got from my best mate Nathan. And as usual with me and new gear, I was rushing last minute, getting it all set up and working, and didn't leave myself enough time to do a test recording beforehand. So the voiceover quality wasn't great, I ended up grabbing the audio from the in-car camera instead, as it was slightly clearer. It still wasn't great, but hopefully you still get a laugh out of me narrating the laps from whatever you can hear of my voice, and you enjoy the footage overall, or whichever parts you do choose to watch. It was a pretty good feeling to be able to actually drive the car the way it was designed to be driven for once, and start to get a feel for what the car likes in certain situations. Definitely had no issue putting the street tyres through their paces. The cheap Achilles ADR Sports did alright considering, but were pretty easily overpowered. The brakes are unbelievable, and the steering and suspension make for a pretty well set up package, but definitely delivered in the fun department. 
It was also really a good excuse for me to wear my full race kit for once. Thanks again for checking us out. If you're new and love what we're doing and love all things high performance, check out our other videos. Hit the subscribe button under this video. It costs nothing. It's totally free, but it does help us to gain some momentum with our channel, especially while we're a small fry amongst big name YouTubers and there's a lot of them out there. I've been saying it for a while, but we're pretty close to launching our brand formally and going live with a few things we've been working on. So keep an eye out on our socials for that one. So if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. Also chuck a comment in below too. I'd love to hear your feedback on the content and my rookie driving skills. I had a cracking time trying to wrestle the car around the track and pretending like I somewhat knew what I was doing. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stick around for the end of this, something big and exciting I can finally announce and I'll see you all again soon.
goes a little bit quicker again. Oof. and track mode so I'm sure it works but um, I need someone who is a much more skilled driver than I am I think to um, get the most out of it there's some, <laughs> there's some fresh looking skids around here so I reckon someone's come up a few times and I reckon it might have been the Cressida or the Cresta sorry Guys, thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the video. So I can finally announce that our merch store is now live. Check out becauseracecarshop.com.au on your PC, tablet, or your mobile device. We've got you covered for all your apparel, both ladies, men's, and kids, along with some pretty cool items for the garage and workshop, and of course our stickers. So the clothing is a super nice fit, and the material is super comfy. And to be honest, most of my wardrobe has now been replaced with items from the store. As we're still small, most of the items have a week to two week turnaround, but there are some items that will be available by pre-order, so check those out too. Guys, if you want something we don't already stock, let us know. Thanks again for watching guys, I'll see you next time.